bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jehovah Almighty. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jehovah Almighty. King of glory, we love you. We bless your holy name. We will always be grateful to you for everything you did for us in the past year. And thank you again and again in advance for what you will do for us in the new year. So we will keep on saying, Father, may your name forever be glorified. And Father, we are praying that as we proceed again with our study of your word, the power that is in your word will perform miracles, signs, and wonders in all our lives. Thank you, my Father and my God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. We want to continue with our series, Going Higher. Uh, today we'll be looking at part six, going higher, part six. Our text, as you know, is First King chapter 17, but today we will be moving on to verse two. We have been dealing with verse one, but now we will proceed to Verse 2. We will read verse 1 along so that we see the connection. First King chapter 17, from verse 1 to 2. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, him there means Elijah, saying, the word of the Lord came unto Elijah. The first thing you want to learn here is that the word of the Lord is a traveler. The word of the Lord is powerful, very quick, very sharp. According to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, Hebrews 4, verse 12, says the word of the Lord is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. As a matter of fact, according to the Lord Jesus Christ himself, John chapter 6, verse 63, John 6, verse 63, he says that the word he speaks to us, they are spirit and they are life. The word of the Lord is very effective. Isaiah chapter 55, from verse 10 to 11. Isaiah 55, 10 to 11, the Almighty God says, the word that has gone out of my mouth 
will not return to me void. It will accomplish that for which I sent it. Very, very effective. Word of God doesn't fail. And the word of the Lord is very dependable. Psalm 119, verse 89. Psalm 119, verse 89. It says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It's very dependable. It doesn't change. It's not, uh, it's not a kind of something you can depend upon. It's not like the word of some men. The word of God is dependable. And so the word of the Lord can travel. It's a traveler. And when it arrives, it can heal and it can deliver. Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word and he healed them. So if you are going higher, definitely you need that the word of the Lord will come to you frequently. And one of the things it will do when it gets to you is it will give you healing. You can't climb when you are sick. So you need the word of the Lord regularly to keep you healthy, whole, so you can enjoy divine health and then climbing becomes easy. Now you need the word of the Lord, particularly when you don't know what to do next. Elijah had come to the palace, had delivered the message of the Lord. Now the question is, what next? In the journey of life, as you climb higher and higher, there will be a moment when you have to take a decision. And many a times you don't even know where to turn. What to do next? What do I do next? In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, Isaiah 30, verse 21, the Bible says, you will hear a word behind you saying, this is where you should turn and whether you should turn to the left or turn to the right. So I'm praying for every one of you hearing the word of God today, first and foremost, I pray that that word will bring you healings. I pray that it will set you free from any yoke that is holding you captive. And I'm praying that that same word will tell you what next to do. You need to hear the word of God Regularly, the word needs to come to you regularly because the moment you begin to rise, you will attract attention. And quite a few of the attention you will attract will not be friendly ones. The moment your star begins to rise, Get ready for opposition. In Genesis chapter 37, Genesis 37, Joseph had no problems until he began to dream of great things. And he shared the dreams. And the Bible says, from that moment onward, the brother hated him. According to Matthew chapter 10, verse 36, Matthew 10, verse 36, many of the enemies that will come against you 
once your star begins to rise, we be members of your family. The Lord himself said, a man's foes will be there of his own household. As long as you are living on Uncle Hans Medan, as long as you are the receiving end, no problem. But the moment they begin to see you rise, moments, the moment things begin to get better and better for you, oh, opposition will come. For example, if you read 1 Samuel chapter 17, 1 Samuel 17, and read it all the way from verse 17 to 37, 1 Samuel 17, from verse 17 to 37, you discover that in the case of David, the moment he was anointed king in the midst of his brethren, opposition came. Opposition came from within. Opposition came from without. If you read that passage very well, you will discover that when David arrived at the battlefront and had Goliath strengthening the, the, the people of God, and he had the audacity to ask the people around, what will be my reward if I kill this man? <laughs> The first fellow to attack him was his eldest brother. What are you doing here? Stupid boy. Arrogant boy. Get back to the farm. This is because <laughs> the first brother discovered that when it was time to choose a king, God didn't choose him. And he couldn't hide the Opposition. He couldn't hide his anger. I said, hey, you are here again. We thought that uh, well, after they anointed you, you went back to look after the sheep. You, what are you doing here? Another promotion. And then, you, of course, you, you had David himself saying later on to King Saul, uh, a lion had come before. I killed it, a bear came, I killed it. Uh, this Goliath is just going to be just one of the oppositions. You need the word of God when your star begins to rise. Because in particular, you will need God's direction as to how to deal with this opposition. Because when you read 2 Samuel chapter 5, from verse 17 to 25, 2 Samuel 5, from verse 17 to 25, which we discussed in one of our Open Heavens uh, devotion in the past year. The Bible tells us that as soon as the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king in Israel, they decided to raise up an army and fight him. As one of my children pointed out in that our morning devotion when we were discussing, he said, but it is these same Philistines who were protecting David from King Saul. He was living with them. But as soon as King Saul died and David became king in his stead, oh, all the so-called friends became enemies. And you better get ready for that because they are bound to be some of the people who are happy to have you on the ground. Now, as you begin to rise, and you are going to rise in Jesus' name, some of them will gang up against you. Now, in that same passage, David asked God for help, and the word of God came to him. The first time the Philistines ganged up against him, God says, attack them frontally. 
But the second time, they ganged up against him. God said, no, not a frontal attack this time. You have to go from behind them. In dealing with oppositions that will rise after you begin to rise higher, you need the word of God to come to you to tell you how to handle the situations. Not only that, you need the word of God when you suddenly run into a roadblock. Because in your journey to higher grounds, <laughs> there are bound to be one or two roadblocks. And in the process, you might look behind you and discover that the enemies are closing in. It may appear to you as if you're about to even lose what you have already gained. Exodus chapter 14. You can read the old chapter, Exodus 14, the old chapter. The children of Israel have just gained their independence. They were on their way to the promised land. And all of a sudden, here comes the Red Sea, blocking the way. And when they look back, here comes Pharaoh with his army, about to bring them back into bondage or kill them where they were. Once your star begins to rise, you will run into opposition, the kind that may want to cause you to lose what you have gained thus far. Some of you will probably remember that when we began the Holy Ghost service here at Redemption Camp, it wasn't long before we attracted the attention even of the federal government of, the, of that time. When all of a sudden, the federal minister of uh, roads I think rules and walks or something, suddenly made an announcement that he was going to close down redemption camp. We were just, we were still very little. Well, we are still little, but uh, by the grace of God, we are going to be bigger still. And the federal minister of works or I think walks too, yes. Rose, the days which was the one in charge of rose and walks came. With the entire television crew of uh, NTA he came to the camp here with the intention of announcing to us that we will not hold any meeting here again. But thank God, the word of the Lord came, and the matter was resolved. There will always be opposition the moment your star begins to rise. That's why you must keep your ears open so you can hear from God, what do we do now? And then you need to hear the word of the Lord loud and clear. when. It appears as if your progress has come to an abrupt stop. When you started, you were making progress, but all of a sudden, it looks as if, oh, you aren't moving forward anymore. Then you need to hear from God, what do I do now? For example, in Joshua chapter 5, from verse 10 to 15, Joshua 5, 10 to 15, the Bible says Joshua was standing by the wall of Jericho. The children of Israel were, already, were on their way to the promised land. Now, here comes the wall of Jericho. 
and they needed to move forward. And there's a little bit of problems here because the Bible stated clearly, manna had stopped falling. <laughs> so they needed to move. But here is the wall blocking their way. Thank God the word of the Lord came. God himself came down. And if you read Joshua chapter 6 from verse 1 to the end, Joshua 6 from verse 1 to the end, God gave specific instructions to Joshua. You want to overcome this obstacle? This is what you must do. Get your people together. Walk around the wall once a day for six days. On the seventh day, walk around seven times. Then shout. There is no way Joshua could have thought of that method of dealing with the wall of Jericho. Nobody fights a wall by walking around uh, the enemy uh, with your mouth shut, walking dumb for six days, and then seven times on the sixth day. I am sure the people on the wall will probably be looking at these people and say, what's wrong with them? Are, are they paralyzed by fear or what? But when they did, of course, what the word of God told them to do, you know the rest of the story. They shouted uh, the seventh time on the seventh day, and the wall came down flat. Has your progress been stopped? I pray that the word of God will come to you now and will tell you when to shout so that as you shout, the wall of Jericho blocking your way will come down flat in Jesus' name. You need the word of God. When the issue now is not even uh, a roadblock or uh, something uh, stopping you from marching on, but there is someone inside, inside your camp, sabotaging your effort. Someone you don't know that is steadily causing problem for you so that your progress can come to a complete standstill. Example, you find Joshua chapter 7. You can read it all the way to Joshua chapter 8. Joshua and the children of Israel, they have just won a great victory over the wall of Jericho. And then they had one little project, as you could call it, a little town called I, that they thought this one would be an easy walkover. And what was it they discovered? Oh, mighty defeat. Joshua fell on his face before God and said, what do I do now? What do I do now? How can this possibly be happening? You promised me at the beginning, everywhere the sole of my feet are trod, you've given to me. But now, I'm in trouble. And the word of the Lord came to him. I pray for those of you whose projects have been uh, stagnated over the years. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we will hear a word today that will show you where the problem lies. Then they discover there's somebody within was causing the problem. One fellow called Achan. And God told Joshua, get rid of this fellow. And your progress will continue. You know the story. Just read Joshua chapter 7 
and then read Joshua chapter 8. And you find that at the end of the day, Joshua was able to take over the city of Ai, and progress continued. When we had the first Congress, Lekki 98, Oh, God sent help all over. People were practically falling over one another to contribute to the success of the program. And I mean, things went very well. So with that boldness, we approach uh, Lucky 99. Uh, well, Congress 99, not at Lekki now, but here at the camp. And I just discovered everybody who made a pledge refused to pay. Well, almost all. What's going on, Lord? I'm sure you, are, you want me to continue. You don't want this thing to be well, just once. Why is it that money is not coming? And you know, Lord, that every Naira that you provided in the past Congress was judiciously used. What was left over is what we are using here now to clear the grounds for the next Congress. What have I done wrong that I'm facing total defeat now? Because Money wasn't coming at all. And then God spoke and said, some people are stealing your seed that you are sowing. They did not allow any of it to reach the ground. Ah, how? Anyway, I'll cut a long story short. I made inquiries. I discovered who were the thieves. I got rid of the thieves, and as soon as I got rid of the thieves, money began to flow again. And I was able to do not only Congress 99, Congress 2000, Congress 2001, the Congress is still going on. I pray for every one of you, every plant God has not planted in your home, in your business, in your churches, the Almighty God himself will uproot. He will reveal and judge in Jesus' name. Now, you need to hear from God when it appears as if each time you are at the edge of a major breakthrough, something happens so that you are now walking around in circles then you need the word of God. And some of you know what I'm talking about. You have the breakthrough almost within your grasp. And then it will slip. And then you go back to uh, ground zero. Something has to happen. You need to hear the word of God. I mean, for example, in John chapter 5, verse 2 to 9, John 5, 2 to 9, the Bible tells us of that man who had been by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. Every year, just before he could jump into the pool, after the angel had started the pool, somebody got him before him, and he would go back to where he, he started from, year after year after year. At the beginning of every year, when this happy new year, he would think, okay, this is going to be my year. Then the year will end, and nothing will happen. Failure upon failure. Ah, in the name of the almighty God that I serve, this particular year will be a happy one for you. That which you have been hoping for, you will get it this year. Because this man all of a sudden discovered why he was lying down there, not knowing what will happen again this year, the word himself, that the Lord Jesus Christ,
came, paid him a visit. I said, all right, would you like to be made whole? <laughs> he said, I've been here for 38 years. God said, well, don't let's talk about history now. Just get up and go. And the name that's above every other name, I am issuing a decree on behalf of my father. I'm saying to all of you who have been going around in circles, get up and go to higher grounds. Amen. And then you need to hear the word of God when everyone seems determined to hold you down. When everyone, and I mean everyone, neighbors, people you don't even know, just all of them seem to gang up together to make sure you are not going to make progress. At that stage, you need to hear the word. A good illustration will be found in Mark chapter 10, from verse 46 to 52. Mark 10, 46 to 52. That's the story of uh, Bartimaeus. I know some people still call him blind Bartimaeus, but he, he, he wasn't blind anymore. When this man heard that Jesus was passing by, and he felt that at long last my year has come, and he began to cry to Jesus for help, everyone around told him to shut up. They told him, well, who are you? Who told you you? You can ever go beyond the level of a beggar. Shut your mouth. But thank God he kept on crying until the Almighty God sent a word to him and said, hey, go and bring him. And from that day onward, he kept on going steadily upward. I pray that the Almighty God will send a word to you today and pull you out of all those forces trying to hold you down in Jesus' name. Conclusion. When am I going to hear the word of God? When will the word come to me? Well, if you're a child of God, the word has already come to you. He has spoken through me to you today. He said in his word that I will decree a thing and it will be established unto me, I've decreed that your progress will no longer be hindered. If you are not yet a child of God, and the word has come to you too, long ago, you know, in Matthew 11 from verse 28 to 30, Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Jesus Christ has said to you, come unto me, you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me. That's an invitation to higher grounds. Come. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Let him hold you by your hand and begin to live to higher. So the choice is yours. Will you respond to his invitation or will you not? If you want to respond to his invitation, wherever you are, bow your heads now and call on him and say, Lord, here I come. I surrender my life to you. Please save my soul, forgive all my sins, and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Please, Lord, receive me today, and I will be yours for the rest of my life. Talk to him, and I will join my faith with yours and pray for your salvation, even right now. Thank you, Father. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name. I want to give you all glory and honor for your word that has gone forth again today. And I want to thank you because I know there is enough power in your word, not just to heal, not just to deliver, but also to save. As many as have decided to surrender their life to you today, Lord, please receive them. 
have mercy on them. Forgive all their sins, Lord. Save their souls and receive them into the family of God. And I pray that from now on, they will constantly be hearing your word and your word will be performing miracles in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, those of you who have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, please get in contact with me as soon as possible. And I promise you I'll be praying for you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you'll be going steadily upward from now on. I will advise you to look for the Redeemed Christian Church of God near you. Go there, talk to the pastor. He will tell you more about what you need to do so that you can begin to go upward steadily because you need to be hearing the word of God constantly. As for those of you who are already children of God, you must pray to him, cry unto him today, that from this moment onward, the word of God will be coming to you steadily. Whenever you find yourself being hindered from climbing, pray that God himself will speak to you and set you going higher and higher every day. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.